Hello. Welcome to my channel. In this tutorial, we'll learn how to combine Mixamo animations with Blender Nonlinear Animation Editor. Let's get started the lecture. Before starting the tutorial, you can watch the tutorial about how to import Mixamo characters and animations into Blender. Let's go to Mixamo website and download the character and animations. Click on the character tab, type football in search box. Select the character. Click on the animations tab, type goalkeeper in search box. Choose the goalkeeper idle animation. Click on the download button, the file format will be FBX. Frame rate will be 30 FPS, and skin option will be selected. So, we will download this animation with character together. Now, let's download other two animations. Choose the goalkeeper diving save animation. Download this animation without skin this time. So, we will download only animation. Download Goalkeeper Overhand Throw Animation in the same way. Let's open new Blender file, hit the A key and delete all objects in the scene. Now, let's import the character and animations into Blender. Click on the file menu, Import, FBX, and choose the idle animation file with skin, and import the file into Blender. Let's play the animation. Select the armature. We can see the keyframes belong to animation in timeline editor. It is very long for idle animation. Let's select the keyframes till frame 80 and delete them. Select all remaining keyframes. Hit the G key and drag to frame 1. Also, click on the Output Properties tab, and set the frame rate of the animation to 30 FPS. Because we have downloaded 30 FPS animations. OK. Let's import another animations into Blender. Firstly, let's import the saving animation. Move the armature to right side on the x-axis. Let's play the animation. As you can see, we have only armature, we don't have skin. Let's import the ball throw animation in the same way. Alright. It is time to combine all animations. Let's switch the Timeline Editor to Dope Sheet Editor. Switch the Dope Sheet to Action Editor. Select the Idle Armature, and rename the action as Idle. Select the Saving Armature, and rename the action as Saving. In the same way, select the Ball Throw Armature, and rename as Throw. So, we have stored three different actions into Blender. Now, Let's switch the Dope Sheet Editor to Non-Linear Animation Editor. Click on the push down button for idle action. As you can see, the action has converted into a strip. We can hit the G key, and move the track anywhere on the timeline. Also we can hit the S key, and scale up and down the track, so we can speed up or down the animation. In the same way, let's push down the other actions. Let's select the armatures except the idle, and delete them. We don't need them anymore. Because we have stored these actions into Blender. Now, let's add new action strip to idle track. With the idle track as selected, click on the add menu, add action strip. Choose the saving action in the list. In the same way, Add the ball throwing action. 
We have three different tracks in the timeline. You can consider this as video editor. Select the saving track, and drag to right side. Don't drag the strip all the way up to end of the previous track. Because we will blend both tracks for smooth transition. In the same way, drag the throw strip to right side. Let's play the animation. It looks cool. But, the character comes to back during the transition between the saving and throwing actions. To fix this problem, select the armature, and switch to pose mode. Click on the object data properties tab, go to viewport display section, enable the in front option. So, we can see the all bones through the character. Also, enable the axis option. With the throw strip is selected, press tab key. So, we can edit this track. Now, let's select the hips bone. Go to the frame where the character still in place. Press Shift S and cursor to selected. Then hit the I key and add a location keyframe. Then Jump to next frame, press Shift S, and selection to cursor. Hit the I key again, and add another location keyframe. OK. Let's adjust the other keyframes now. Switch the NLA editor to graph editor. We can see the animation graphics belong to the hips bone. We need to set X and Z location keyframes of the hips bone. Click on the eye icon, and hide the all curves in the editor. Then, unhide the X location curve. Press home key to fit the curve to window. Select the other keyframes. Hit the G and Y keys respectively, move up the keyframes so that to be at the same level with the other two keyframes. In the same way, let's adjust the Z location keyframes. Let's play the animation. There we go. The problem has been solved. Switch the graph editor to NLA editor again. We can disable the axis option. Now, let's make smooth transition between the actions. Select the idle action, press N key and open the right panel. Click on the strip tab, switch the blending mode to combine, and enable the auto blending option. Select the saving action, switch the blending mode to combine, and enable the auto blending mode. Adjust the throw action in the same way. Let's play the animation again. It looks better and cool now. We can also set the end frame of the animation to frame 240. Click on the Output Properties tab, and set the end frame of the animation to 240. Alright. Let's import a ball and animate it with Goalkeeper. I will share the download link in the description. 
Firstly, let's switch to object mode. Go to file menu, append, choose the soccer ball blender file, and append the soccer ball. Press S key and scale down the ball enough. Press Shift S, and selection to cursor. Now, let's determine the first frame where the goalkeeper touches the ball for the first time. Switch the NLA editor to Timeline Editor. Drag the cursor, and determine the frame. It is frame 91. Press numpad 3 and switch to side view. Place the ball into goalkeeper's hand exactly. On the viewport, hit the I key and add a location keyframe. Press numpad 7 and switch to top view. Go back to frame 70. This will be shooting time. Move the ball back side. Then, hit the I key, and add new location keyframe. Let's play the animation. We want the goalkeeper holds the ball until he throws the ball again. To do that, go to frame 91, select the armature, and switch to pose mode. Select the right hand bone, and we can see the bone name at the top left. Don't forget the bone name. Switch back to object mode, select the ball. Click on the object constraint tab, and add a child of constraint. Select the armature as target, and select the right hand bone as sub-target. Click on the set inverse button. Let's play the animation. As you can see, the ball is not at correct location at the beginning. We need to disable the constraint till frame 91. To do this, go to frame 90, click on the eye icon and disable the constraint. Hit the I key and add a keyframe. Then, jump to frame 91, enable the constraint again, and add another keyframe. Let's play the animation. There we go. It looks fine. Now, we need to determine the frame, where the character throw the ball. We can press right arrow key and we can go frame by frame. I think it is frame 205. Jump back to frame 204, go over the eye icon, hit the eye key. Then, jump to frame 205, disable the constraint, hit the eye key again. Press numpad 3 and switch to side view. Go back to frame 204, go over the viewport, hit the I key, and add location keyframe. Then, jump to frame 205, move the ball back. Hit the I key, and add another location keyframe. Go to frame 230. Move the ball forward. Hit the I key and add a keyframe more. Let's play the animation. There we go. It is time to render. Firstly, let's add a field. I will share the download link in the description. Go back to first frame. Press Shift S, and cursor to World Origin. Append the field file.
Let's switch to render preview mode. Hide the armature in the viewport. Click on the render properties tab and switch to EV render engine. Let's add a sunlight. Adjust proper angle for the shadow. Set the strength value to 4. When we zoom in the character, we can see shading and clipping problems. Press N key and open the right panel. Click on the view tab and set the clip start value to 0.01. Clipping problem has solved. Now, select the character. Switch the timeline editor to shader editor. Set the metallic value all the way down to 0. It looks better now. Let's add a camera for render. Firstly, determine proper perspective. Then, press Ctrl Alt Numpad 0 and snap to camera to view. Click on the Render Properties tab, set the render samples to 32. Click on the Output Properties tab and set the resolution value to 1080 pixels. Scroll down to Output section, choose the folder you want to save. Set the file format to MPEG, switch the container to MPEG4. Go to Render menu, and Render Animation. Thanks for watching. See you in the next tutorial.